You are welcome to the first in the series of public discussion forum brought to you by the partnership between the Open Society Initiative for Southern Africa or CISA and News Media uh, News Diggers Media Limited. Let me introduce the, the guest speaker. We have uh, the president of the Law Association of Zambia, Lars, Mr. Edwin Mitwa, in our midst. We also have uh, the Deputy Media Director of the Patriotic Front, Mr. Antonio Mwanza. Sir, you're welcome. So the topic of discussion this evening is separation of powers. We are going to look at the executive versus the judiciary. The judiciary is one arm that appears to be totally separate from the three arms of government. There is, however, a linkage between the judiciary and the executive in that although the constitution says the judiciary will be, self, will be funded separately in the budget, the judiciary still has to get its funding through the Ministry of Finance. And from my interaction with the judiciary, this has proved to be a challenge in the recent past. While separation of powers is key to the workings of any democratic government, it is widely accepted that no democratic system exists with an absolute separation of powers or an absolute lack of separation of powers. The foregoing notwithstanding, it is my sincere hope and indeed the hope of the Law Association of Zambia that all branches of government will, constant, will constantly adhere to their respective functions as it's stipulated in the Constitution for the sake of protecting the liberties of every person in Zambia and better the lives of the Zambian people. Each organ of the government owes it to the people of Zambia to respect the Constitution because the authority granted to each branch of government is derived from the people of Zambia. And as Zambians, I did ask why should an ordinary person be concerned about separation of powers? As Zambians, we must constantly recall and act on our resolve, as stated in the preamble of our constitution, that we, the people of Zambia, commit ourselves to upholding the principles of democracy and good governance. Is the constitutional court in its current form a competent court of jurisdiction. Why I say so is that Article 141 of the Constitution of Public Zambia is very clear on the qualification of judges. And it clearly says 15 years experience in practice of constitutional law and human rights. And all the judges, all the judges on the bench of the Constitutional Court do not meet this minimum requirement of the Constitution. Now, if all, all the judges on the Constitutional Court have overthrown the Constitutional Republic of Zambia, which Constitution are they interpreting? <laughs> my, my question is on the, on the current constitution of Zambia. I remember when it was being, being signed by His Excellency the President at a grandiose ceremony, he said that he was signing that document with closed eyes. Isn't it any wonder that we are having so many issues at the same time? Because of the closed eyes. You raised the issue of signing the constitution with closed eyes. Closed eyes. If you go to to the, the Supreme Court now, you are going to find a woman, a statue of a woman whose eyes are closed. It's a proverbial wisdom that the law should never have eyes. And when president is assenting to the law, he has to assent to the law with closed eyes because he's not going to assent to the law according to his views, his feelings, and his opinions as an individual. He has to do it on behalf of the people of Zambia and they shouldn't have feelings about it because it's not a law of affair. It's an issue of a constitutional matter and his opinion does not matter. This is all for me. Please understand, I have nothing against Mr. Mwanza, he's a colleague, but I'm not expecting to sit there in front when I was expecting to see the legal fraternity to 
talk to us. In fear and esprit, let's not do this. In PF, there are ministers, there are all those positions. Why is it that you should bring a party here? No, thank you. Um, let me start by making acknowledgement, uh, President Mulongoti. We've taken into consideration your uh, submission. We are very grateful that you have uh, given us counsel. We are going to do better next time. Um, we did attempt to get um, experts, as uh, some colleagues have requested that we do. We did, in fact, uh, request some experts to come through. But you will understand that sometimes some of the people that you uh, invite may not be available at the last minute. And then that becomes a challenge on our part. And uh, it was not by design that we didn't want any other people to come. As you can see, there are more uh, chairs. Uh, it is, to start with, it is very unfair. To, uh, to start with, it is very unfair for <coughs> this forum to remove Antonio Manza from being a member of public. He's also a member of the public. Therefore, he has the right to, to speak and contribute. Whether those views are attributed to PF or not, those are his views. The problem I think we are having in this country is that, or the PF, is the issue of what is called the peak. That is what is making people being apprehensive. It's the peak. Party and its, its government. You can't be having people like Amosianda explaining policy. That guy called you, what was his name? Uh, you're the director of to Antonio Manz. <laughs> your letter is not heard. Is there any strategy as a fraternity on how well, number one, we will engage the public? Because one day you will need to account for the office that you hold. You are hesitant to state what the constitution says because when it came to the qualifications, uh, in my view, you were a little bit hesitant on stating what it is and stating that uh, we've written that, so I do not want to comment on that matter. The appointment process. The PF constitution specifically said that it will only appoint members of the party. Now, it basically means the judiciary and other members who are appointed to any position must be members of the party. Now, that's a clear violation of the constitution. And it's not good governance because the constitution provide for good governance. If you only appoint cadres and part members, or people considered as part members to the judiciary, then that's not good governance. Clear violation of the constitution. And we know, and I can confirm, that as we are speaking right now, many people are being displaced from the civil service because of their tribe. That is very wrong. It's better, that is why the president there, who is my brother, we grew up together in Emmasdale, and I'm very happy that today is the president of the World Association of China. He was saying, could you provide specifics so that the people here are not misled? That's the way we are supposed to live, because we are going to incite people to, 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 to leave this over and believe that the patriotic front under President Edgar Chagwarum, they are applying the provisions of their party constitution to govern this country. When you talk of separation of power, under the patriotic front government, personally, I've never seen separation of power. First and foremost, they have used the one court as a garage where they are storing or keeping cases with regards to national guidance. Let me give an example. The, the issue of um, our petition, Lusaka Central, Unadi, the other court concluded on the issue. They are now packed in the home court. And we don't know whether the judgment will be passed in 2021 when we will almost be going to another court. So when you talk about separation of power, they haven't been separation of power. Everything is being managed by one entity. And that is a danger, especially when it comes to application of the law. So when you talk about separation of powers, we don't think that there are these separation of power when it comes to that. So I think LAS also has failed to provide us with proper guidance with regard to the law. 
That's why Nas was able to to mislead the nation on the matter of uh, the Swatini gift that our president received. So all those are issues that we look up to, to Lars to say, let Lars give guidance. But Lars has actually told us, we don't know whether Lars has become also partisan, or maybe it's, it, it, it's more guidance. So thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for Mr. Lars. What, what an evening. Like I said, this wasn't a Lars press conference. It was a discussion forum. So we are glad that you were able to tolerate uh, each other despite the, you know, the political divide. We are very grateful once again. Thank you very much for coming.